Cholrophobia. It's a real fear, and I have it. Hello, welcome to my channel. This is Asha Media TV. My name is Asha, and if you're new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is where I like to watch and react and review a variety of stuff related to sci-fi, fantasy, and comic books. So in today's video, I am going to be watching episode two of the second season of Supernatural, titled, Everybody Loves the Clown, But I Don't. <laughs> As I said at the intro of this video, culverphobia is a real thing and I actually have it. Not a severe form of it, but mild enough to actually break out into a sweat Whenever I see a clown, when I'm around clowns, it's not pretty. I don't like clowns. So the fact that this episode is going to have a focus on clowns is going to be interesting. Now, mind you, watching it on screen may not be the end of the world for me, but uh, I, I just hate clowns. <laughs> I really hate them. But before I get to pressing play on this episode, I need to cover some basic stuff, especially if you're new here. Please listen up. Don't skip ahead, okay? Number one, just in case you missed it in the title, this is a spoiler reaction and a spoiler review. So there are spoilers ahead. Spoilers ahead. You have been warned. And number two, if you've come across older videos where I was showing video footage and clips of the episode, I no longer do that here on YouTube. Instead, I offer a watch along experience so you get access to the episode on your end. I have it on my end. We sync up together using my visual and vocal cues and we watch the episode together. However, if that's not your thing and you prefer a more alternative reaction with bonus content and a more stress-free experience in watching me react to this episode, check out the details in the description box below and you'll know how to get access to that. All right, so I've covered the basics with the newbies and for those of you that are not new to my channel, are you ready? Let's go with this episode with clowns. Ah! <laughs> Okay, so if you're new here, listen up for a little bit. I just want to explain to you how my watch along process works. And of course, if you are not new, skip ahead to the countdown or the review. You know, I'll see you then. All right, newbie, listen up. So I am streaming episodes of SPN uh, from uh, Amazon Prime Video. I line up at 0000. I do not skip the recap. And um, I will give you a visual cue on the screen when I'm pressing play, when I'm pressing pause, and when I'm rewinding. And I tend to pause for three specific reasons. Number one, because I've got lag and buffering issues, which hasn't been an issue with uh, Amazon Prime, thankfully. <laughs> and uh, number two is because I wanna rewind back to a scene that I've missed for whatever reason, or I just wanna kind of take a look at something, which is the most common reason. But with this show, it comes and goes. <laughs> the third reason is more common with this particular show, and that is to have a commentary moment where I want to just kind of talk about something that I am scared to forget in my review part, or it's a mind-blowing experience, which tends to be my experience with this show. And so, yeah, those are the three main reasons I will pause. Also, I do provide a timer that gives you an idea where in the actual episode I'm at just in case somehow you lose your sync with me. It could be off by one or two seconds because I do put it in post edit. It's not a live timer, but it's the best I can do. And I've been told it's useful. So you have that as well. Sounds easy? Easy peasy, I hope. Nonetheless, just as a reminder, I do offer an alternate version of my reaction to all episodes of SPN. Details about that is in the description box below. Just reminding you of that. All right, let's get to watching episode two about loving clowns, which I don't. <laughs> okay, I am ready to count down to play. I'm a bit nervous because we're gonna be going into the territory of clowns when we just lost Papa Winchester in the previous episode. So I am curious as to how long they're gonna spend on the death of John before they move on to a new case. Hmm. All right, we'll see. Let's go. Three, two, one, play.
greedy. <laughs> wow. What did he say? Okay, pausing, pausing before. So I'm at one, two, nine. I just want to acknowledge that the way they synced up this song, I, I told you I'm not a music person. And if you're new here, just letting you know, I'm not really all that into music per se, meaning that I don't know what's what half the time. It's like, anyway, point is, now that I know, I'm aware that season two has all the original soundtrack, I can already hear a difference. Like just even how they queued up this song with that moment, with the whole montage. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. I don't know who's singing it. I don't know who's woo. <laughs> You're more than welcome to tell me in the comments, but I could see that I'll have no choice but to pay attention to the music because it's quite obviously, well, pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Let's continue. Three, two, one, play. Now. Uh, Medford, Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. Ah! Amen. There's something strange about grown men mostly dressed up like that like even as a kid i didn't like it he doesn't look like the kind of clown i'd want to wave at no oh. Is that a ghost clown? That's even worse. Oh my fucking God. I'm sorry, that's creepiest sight ever. And she's so happy to see him. As the mother, I'd be like, uh, what's the clown doing in the middle of the night? Nowhere. Oh my god, he, he's in a fucking backyard. He's in a fucking backyard. How's this kid not alarmed by that? Like, just naturally. I'd be like weirded out by that. Are you for real? Child, are you for real? I'm sorry. It's the dumbest kid ever. This is the dumbest kid I've ever seen. No kid would just open a door for a clown in the middle of the night. No sane. Oh my god. No, no, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. But I understand it's part of the story. Okay, I understand. Jesus. Is that John? They burned his body? Why? Oh, maybe he asked to be burned? Oh, Dean. Oh, look at his face. Jensen, that's some great acting there, man. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, yeah, yeah. What did he say when he whispered in your ear? He's not going to say it. Yeah. It's going to be the secret of the season, right? I just know it. Hmm. I guess they burn him to make sure one week later. Okay. To make sure like he doesn't turn into anything. <laughs> that could just be, I guess, his choice of a uh, funeral. He's not bad at it. Ellen. Wow. <laughs> I thought she would at least uh, be unknown number. So maybe she called from that payphone? That was easily uh, traceable. <laughs> soccer hot soccer dad, more like it. Mm hmm. Mm. <laughs> I don't know why it makes me laugh when a fly gets killed by one of those things. Did you sleep on the pool table? I guess it's better than the floor. That's likely Ellen. That. I learned a new move! <laughs> that was good. That was good. time he tries to be so cool oh I guess she's Ellen maybe somebody's Ellen
Okay, she's on. <laughs> if you deserve it. Yeah, it's a network of everything. Yeah, why didn't he tell them? I thought that was obvious. No. <laughs> Don't press it. Oh my goodness. Impress me, impress me. Exactly? Exactly 51 hours. No, you don't. <laughs> That's the best justification for a haircut I have ever heard. I love that. <laughs> Dean, you see where his eyes are going? Oh my god, that was a good moment.
<laughs> oh gosh. Oh. I think she's into him though. She's just playing a little tough. Left in pieces? Oh, thank you. Somebody's on board. I have something in common with Sam. Yeah, this one does. Mm -hmm. All right, Sam's uh, trying to make up for it now, I guess. Because he would always argue about stuff. Now he's like, okay, I'm just going to go with it. That's what dad would have wanted. Oh, no. <laughs> I wish I was like that kid. <laughs> what is that kid playing? A video game? Oh, this damn thing. says that so what's this clown's deal with killing people's parents Oh my goodness. Ah, oh my God. Scream. Oh, okay. Gonna pause before we get into the next scene. So I'm at 1917. All right. So my apologies if I was a little too ranty off about the dumb girl. Because <laughs> I'm seeing now with a skeptical kid. It probably persuades them, maybe talks to them in their mind or something. But either way, it does something to them to feel like, hey, this clown, he's cool, he's whatever, for it to, to be seduced into, for them, for the kids to be seduced to get inside the home and do and kill the parents. Oh, it's creepy. It's really creepy. All right, let's continue. Three, two. One, play. Mm. 
why is she staring at him like that? <laughs> You're so tall! I'm so short! I don't know. That was weird. <laughs> That's a perfect line for that moment! Yeah. <laughs> Really? Really? <laughs> Some sensitive people! Mm -hmm. That's an interesting. Uh huh. Yeah. Really. Since now, I don't think you should give up on school, though. At least do it part time or something. <laughs> Is that them? Yeah.
fuck! And that's the first time. Oh, it's the second time that's done that to me. Duh. designs these places like how much do you get paid to create one of those you know <laughs> oh it was real Uh. That's a good cover. Wow, they follow them all the way there. Hmm. I can't believe it either. But I am curious, what is he attached to? Maybe the carnival house itself? That that place where he saw the Oh. Oh. Huh. <laughs> No, kiddo, I want to massacre your parents. That's what I do best. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> oh! They shot my clown. Oh, my God. All right, a new type of paranormal. All right, so it's not a ghost. I, I think so from the way she, maybe not. I don't know. Uh.
How many times does he need to tell you? Hashtag truth. He need he needs to hear that. Ah, people grieve in their own ways, though. All right, pausing. I'm at three one three two. I'm gonna go back because I was like still thinking about their their argument, and I kind of missed a bit what he was saying with this describing the clown. Uh, ten, twenty, thirty. Okay, that was a really intense argument, but I'm hashtag Team Dean on that argument anyway. Okay. I'm at 3102, counting down to play. Three, two, one, play. Rakshasa. Hmm. Ooh. Dagger. Ugh. So Cooper is like, um, wait, are they thinking Cooper's a Rakshasa thing or, okay, I, I'm a little confused on that. I'll, I'll see. <laughs> oh my gosh. He goes to the guy with the hell those knives. What? Whoa, is blind dude? Oh. Oh, fuck. Ah! Ah! His face looks so scary! Oh my god! Ew! Is he missing him on purpose just to run after him? Oh, go back into that damn place. Oh, man.
You're lucky this guy is missing deliberately. Maybe he's trying to eat them. Oh. Oh. Well, those brass pipes came in handy. What if they weren't there? Oh, because he remembered they were in there. That's why he went in there. Good thinking, Sam. Oh, so do I. <sighs> I was always the only one in my family that really did not like going to carnivals or, well, fun houses specifically and stuff. I don't mind the roller coasters. out of there <laughs> he's the worst <laughs> look at her she wants to wow Wow, just when it was right there on a silver platter for him. <laughs> Whoa, that's a computer. Yeah. <laughs> this is cool in Boston. Well, him and uh, Sam could be best friends then. <laughs> Just gonna fix that car. Obviously not.
That was deep. So this is how he's going to grieve. Okay. Whatever works. Hmm. Peter Ellis. <sighs> okay. Review coming up. Well, I definitely can't deny that my fear of clowns is very much reinforced from this episode. I am definitely not going to forget this clown, which leads into the first takeaway from this episode that is memorable. And that is the crazy moment where they show the blind guy's face turn into the clown. Oh my goodness. And his eyes glowing all crazy. That moment definitely gave me the it clown vibes, okay? <laughs> and that's enough to keep me screaming for years if I had to watch that face again. And the second thing that I really liked about this episode is how the writers were really clever in conditioning us to the environment up until the end when they killed the clown. Because I think they could have been very lazy if they wanted to in the writing, which some shows are, where it could have been where Sam and Dean just go in there and they happen to see brass pipes and they're like, oh, this is gonna work. But instead what they did, which I thought was really well done, was conditioning me as a viewer to get used to that environment so that by the time Sam remembers the brass pipes because he's been there before, it seems like an organic solution to the actual problem. And the next thing that I really loved with this episode was this introduction to a network. I like that keyword, network of demons, now network of hunters. Especially Ash <laughs> and that hair. I will never look at that kind of hairstyle the same again. I'm telling you for real. And I love how Ash is somewhat like the Google search <laughs> for that episode, you know, especially back in those times when the internet isn't like how it is right now. And with Ellen, we have possible now backstory with John and the kind of people he may have met and burned bridges with, unfortunately, it seems. Uh, I hope I understood that right. So, so far, what I've concluded with the introduction of Ellen and her daughter and Ash is that John uh, not only met up with other people who are looking for the demon as well, but I find it interesting that Sam made it a point to Dean that their father seems to have a habit of falling out with people for different reasons. And so I find that quite interesting. Like, why is he so prone to perhaps having burned bridges with people? I may have likely misunderstood that part. Let me know in the comments and clarify it for me. But that leads me to another thing I'm a bit confused on with that whole scenario is that Sam and Dean did not know about Ellen. There was no notes in his book. So why is that? Because if they're hunters too, why wouldn't John not want his sons to know about them? I would think that being a part of a group of hunters would actually be the best way to go about hunting demons. So that is something I am confused about. And I can only presume John being John that I'm understanding so far had a really good reason for that. I don't know. And because I'm a Dean lover, Dean for life, <laughs> you know I was definitely paying attention to those scenes with him and Ellen's daughter. And I really actually liked the fact that he was going to make the attempt to kind of flirt up with her and, uh, you know, um, uh, say some corny line. But he read her really right. And also at the moment, too, he felt for himself. It just he wasn't into it. Right. And that seemed to have turned her on. So his expression <laughs> right afterwards is really hilarious. And at the end, when she was like, you know, trying again and he's all like, Wrong time, wrong place. I was like, what, what? You know, because 
I'm so used to seeing Dean trying to flirt up a storm to get busy. And this one time he wasn't feeling it for valid reasons. So it was interesting to see what that looks like when he's the one rejecting the kind of stuff he usually wants with women. And the last aspect or takeaway from this episode that definitely would make it a very memorable one alongside that creepy looking deviant clown is the whole thing with Sam and Dean and how they're grieving in their own way. But from what I gather, especially in that last, you know, 10 seconds, um, Dean has more weight in his grief, likely because of what the dad said to him in his ear, because they would not show me that as a viewer unless whatever John whispered has some really grave meaning that he won't even share it with Sam. I guess I'm just kind of frustrated. Not that John said something to Dean, but how bad could it be? Or maybe it's temporary and he's just not ready to share it in the moment that he's still grieving for his father. And for a show like this, where it's all about secrets being revealed, I would not be surprised if whatever John told him, as I said during my reaction, will be like a mind-blowing thing for me. And I hope they don't wait till the last episode of the season to reveal it but i could see it being the big cliffhanger uh, overall if there's one thing i definitely can say is that jared and jensen can act man they can act especially jensen in this episode his performance really shined that moment that shot where he's so still yet so full of emotion that one tear coming down his cheek Mm, mm, mm. That is right there, a brilliant, brilliant performance from a very, very good actor. And I love how at the end when Sam goes to Dean and he admits and pours his heart out about his thoughts and everything that, you know, that seems to have been obvious about what he's trying to make up for because that tends to happen in relationships in general whenever you feel you've let down the person and then the person suddenly dies. And so it was very heartbreaking to see Sam not only admit to Dean all these feelings, but also admit to himself. And I love that last line where he makes it very clear that he is still convinced and very much so that Dean is not all right. And as I just previously mentioned, I loved how me as a viewer, I'm in the know that Dean has a secret, so to speak, that he can't share with Sam. And that's adding a lot more weight to his grief and his anger and whatever else emotion that is stewing in that man. So there you have it. That is my reaction and review of episode two, of the second season of Supernatural. I hope we don't see any more clowns from here on out. I think I'm good. I think I'm good with the clowns. <laughs> Please don't let there be no more clowns. If you enjoyed this video, the best way you can show me is by following the prompt you see there on the screen. Right there, right there. I know you see it, just follow it. Thank you so much for watching and until episode three, people, I'm out. Peace, peace, peace. Thanks for watching. Check out my other videos and subscribe. You know you wanna.